it's time for another amazing chemistry video with Mr. Stapleton. Right, this one's back. I'm doing a nice coffee. Hi guys, welcome to the second video, which is looking at the uh, effect of equilibrium and changing some conditions. Okay, what I'm going to be looking at in this one is the effect of pressure. Okay, so this is the second video, make sure you've watched the first one on concentration. And for this video, I'm going to be doing the same thing again, looking at a reaction, colour coding the reactants and products to be able to then graph them and look at the effect that it has. Okay, so for the pressure one, uh, what you need to understand is that a um, increase in pressure will favour a side with the least number of gaseous moles. Okay, and a decrease in pressure favours a side with the most number of gaseous moles. Now that comes down to the fact that gases have a unique property where they want to take up as much space as possible. Okay, so I'm just going to try and illustrate this very briefly over on this side. Okay, so let's say we've got a container here. Okay, and in this container what we've got is some gases. So I'm going to actually show an equation over here which is called the Harbour process. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to react some nitrogen gas with some hydrogen gas and that in equilibrium forms two moles of ammonia gas. Okay, so that's the equation we're going to be looking at here, the Harbour process. What I'm going to do is take, um, assume we've got some of these all right, inside this reaction vessel over here. Okay, so our little blue dots here are going to be our nitrogen molecules. Okay, so we've got four nitrogen molecules in there. Okay, the yellow ones are going to be our hydrogen, so we've got lots of hydrogen in here as well. Okay, there's all our hydrogen. Okay, and we've got some ammonia in here as well, we don't have much ammonia. Okay, so we've got three ammonia in there. Okay, so what happens when we're changing the pressure, okay, is that we are either enlarging or reducing the size of the container. Okay, so if we enlarge our container, okay, up here, what we're doing, going from here to here, is we are reducing the pressure, or it's a decrease in pressure, okay? If we make it really, really tiny, like this, okay, what we're doing is we're increasing the pressure. All right, so what will happen is that these molecules will go inside either of these containers, and then what we'll do is they will react in order to try and re-establish the initial equilibrium um, that they had, okay? So if we're reducing the pressure up into this one here, we want more particles in here, okay? Because we want to be able to exert the same pressure in a sense in a, in a larger area. So what we're going to do is we want to try and take these, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, okay? So we've got 15 here originally, okay? And what we want to try and do is increase that number in the larger space. So what we've got in our reactions, we've got either one mole and three moles here, forming two moles. So in total in this side, we've got four gaseous moles in equilibrium on this side with two gaseous moles, okay? So what that means is that if we do the forward reaction, we're going to be reducing the number of gaseous moles in the molecule. If we do the back reaction, we're going to be increasing the number of gaseous moles. So what we want to do to go from here to here is we want to actually increase the number of moles so that it exerts the same pressure. So what we're going to do is favour this back reaction, okay, and we're going to take ammonia and we're going to form more nitrogen and hydrogen, okay. So let's say we have these one, two, three ammonia here. Let's say we use up two of those and we've only got one left, all right. So there's our one ammonia that we've got left. We originally had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hydrogens in there, so I'm just going to put them in, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, there's our original hydrogens, and originally we had four nitrogens, so there they are as well, okay, so you can already see, even though I haven't got the extra ammonias in there, but you can already see that it doesn't exert the same pressure, so what we've done is we've taken two of our ammonias, and we've broken them down to form a nitrogen and three hydrogens for every one that we use up. So because we've taken two of them out here, we took two of these pink ones out, we're forming two lots of nitrogens. There's another one, two nitrogens coming in here, okay? And for our hydrogens, we've actually created six new hydrogens. So here we go, one, two, three, four, five, six, okay? So if you count all of those up, I think overall what we should have done is increased it by um, another two, 
or four. Probably so there's probably 19 in here or something like that. Let's count them up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. So we've actually increased it by six. So there's 21 in this new space here. They're going to be pushing out and exerting the same pressure as what we had initially down here, all right? Because we've increased the space they can go in. So the gases want to take up as much room as possible. If we go the other direction here, okay, we're reducing the size, so we're increasing the pressure. So we don't want to try and squish all of these into here. So what we want to try and do is the forward reaction. We want to take some nitrogen and hydrogen and react it to form ammonia, okay? So we originally had the three ammonia in there, okay? And what we're going to try and do is we're actually going to react up as much as we can. So let's say we take out um, two nitrogens, so we've only got two left. Okay, two nitrogens left, we've taken out two of the blue ones. And so two nitrogens are going to react with six hydrogens. So one, two, three, four, five, six only leaves us two hydrogens. Okay, and that's going to create two more ammonia. So now you can see we've gone down to nine molecules inside that space. And so it's a, a much lower concentration of um, when I say concentration, I shouldn't use that term um, lightly because the concentration is probably pretty similar. There's fewer particles inside that space, okay, than there was up here, but the space is smaller. So this is trying to explain here for you why the equilibrium shifts to counteract the change. So if you reduce the pressure, all right, the particles, you want to create more particles to try and re-establish the pressure you originally had. You want to counteract that reduction in pressure by increasing the pressure. Down here, if you increase the pressure, the system's going to shift to try and decrease the pressure, and you do that by creating less molecules. All right, so what we're going to do is we're then going to graph what this looks like. Okay, so I'm going to use this harbour process over here to actually graph what happens when you change the pressure. All right, so you might want to um, maybe just draw that there to keep in mind what happens, because that's important when you're looking at the graphs. So here's our graph again. Okay, and we're going to start initially with some nitrogen and some hydrogen. So here's our nitrogen that we start with, and we also start with some hydrogen as well. Okay, there's our hydrogen. And initially we have no ammonia, but we form it. So here's our ammonia here. Okay, so again, what we've done is we have established an equilibrium through here where the slope of all of our species is zero. Okay, there's our equilibrium. Now what we're going to do is we're going to change the pressure. And so for this one, I think what we're going to do is a decrease in pressure, okay? So for a decrease in pressure, when we showed that initially happening before, um, straight away, the concentration of all the species decreases, okay? Because what you're doing is you're taking everything from a small area and you're putting it into a big area, right? And so your concentration automatically decreases, okay? How we represent that on the graph is like this. All concentrations drop straight away, okay? Now we know from what we just looked at that when we decrease the pressure, that favours the back reaction because we want to re-establish the pressure. We want to counteract that drop in pressure by increasing the pressure and creating more gaseous molecules. So what we do is we create more nitrogen and hydrogen, okay? So our nitrogen and hydrogen go back up, all right? And we keep in mind that mole ratio from the equation, all right? So this actually goes up by 3x amount, and this goes up by just x, all right? Our ammonia over here is going to decrease as it gets used up, and it's going to decrease by 2, okay? So we're actually going to go down quite low here, all right? So down to 2x amount there, until we've re-established our new equilibrium. So that's, that's pressure, all right? It's really easy to tell if a pressure change has occurred on a graph because all your species go up or down straight away. If you increase the pressure, your concentration of all of them go up. If you decrease your pressure, the concentration, like in this case, go down, okay? And then your system shifts to counteract the change by either favouring the side with the most number of moles if it's a decrease in pressure or favouring the side with the least number of moles if it's an increase in pressure. So um, you might want to look over this a couple of times, all right? Make sure you can do the graph on it. We've got one more we're going to be looking at, which will be the effect of temperature. All right, thanks guys, see ya.